intro to PowerPoint and how we can use PowerPoint to design and create an unimaginable amount of items for our classroom. The first thing we need to learn is how we can set up our page. This is a traditional PowerPoint slide, but we want to create something on a standard sheet of paper. So to do so, we're going to go up to File, Page Setup, and I'm going to change my widescreen to regular letter paper. Note that our letter paper is 8.5 by 11 inches, and it gives us a 10 inch by 7.5 inch sheet of paper. This allows for margins, since most of our printers don't like to print all the way to the edge, so this gives us about a half inch leeway on either side of our paper. You can go ahead and play around with this, depending upon what you're trying to design. I'm going to leave it as that. There will be a time when we need to change our settings based on what we're creating, so keep that in mind. I'm going to hit OK. It'll ask if I want to scale up or scale down. Since I have nothing designed, it doesn't matter which one that I choose. Notice I have some text boxes here. I'm going to change my layout to a blank screen so that I start with a very blank canvas. I can also change the layout of my screen by clicking Design, Slide Size, and Page Setup, where it gives me that exact same screen that I had worked in. Now let's see what we can play around with some shapes and see what we can do. I'm going to choose a circle. Now imagine that I want to create a Venn diagram. I don't want an oval, I want a perfect circle. So I'm going to hold down my Shift key while I open my mouse and drag open my circle. Let's say I'm pretty particular on how I want my circle and I want my circle to grow um, equally proportional to each other and let's say I want a three inch circle. Let's say I want to fill in my circle with nothing because I perhaps want my students to work in this circle. I can also change the outline of my circle and now I want a copy of my circle. So I can hit Command C to copy, Command V to paste. Notice as I'm dragging my circle from my previous one over to the top, the two lines above and, be above and below state that my circles are connected to each other or are level with one another. But notice how my circles are not in the middle of my page and maybe I want it to be in the middle of my page. Well we can use PowerPoint to align our items. The first thing we'll do is click one item, I'm going to hit shift and click the other item. Then I can go ahead and hit arrange. Notice in arrange I am able to align items. So let's say I align it to the left. Oh dear, one goes on top of the other because they're aligning everything to the left hand side. That's not going to work if I want them both in the middle. So I'm going to undo them. Let's go back to arrange and align. Let's say I want to align them in the middle. Nothing really worked there. So I'm going to keep trying until I find one that works. Oh, align in the center. Hmm, something's just not right here. What I need to do is group these items together so that they move together. So while they're both selected, I'm going to hit Arrange and group them together so that they move together at the same time. So they're kind of glued together. Don't worry, if you don't like them glued together and you want them separate at another, another time, you can always ungroup them. But now if I align them and I align them in the center, it has now moved my circles into the middle of our page. Let's say I want to design a house. So this time maybe I, if I'm thinking about how I might design a house, I'm going to need a base. And I want my base of my house to be a square. So I'm going to hit shift and drag the square. And notice when I'm putting it in the middle of my paper, it gives me those red lines to help me make sure that I'm where I need to be. I also want my house to be a three inch by three inch. I also want to fill my shape in. But 
maybe instead of having it no shape, maybe I want to give my shape a texture. So when I click more texture, I have lots of different options. I can fill in as a solid. I can fill in as a gradient. I can fill in as a picture or a texture, given all kinds of different ways to do so. I can fill in using a pattern or a, a, uh, a slide background fill. Let's choose, since this might be a house, maybe let's choose something that looks a little like wood. Now on top of this, I want to put a roof. So I'm going to insert another shape. This time we should probably insert a triangle maybe. Maybe inserting a triangle using the exact same way of hitting shift. Typically triangles do hang off the side, but maybe I want mine to go off a little. So I'm going to widen it up up here so it has a little overhang. Notice that my triangle is in the middle of my house because it's lining up in the middle of the paper. But maybe I want my, my roof to be a gradient. I could choose a different color. I can choose its direction. I can choose perhaps a color. And notice I can slide these colors at all different ways. And notice when I click on a color, I'm able to add another color to it. So I could maybe even do colors of the rainbow if I really wanted. Maybe this one should be a green. Play around with this. It's pretty fun to do. We can change the angle so I can change how it swirls around, which is really awesome. Maybe we'll have it be on the side a little bit. Maybe my house needs a window. This time maybe we'll put in a, a, um, a soft window and a, maybe more of a, a rectangular window if you will. Maybe we'll solid fill this one in a light blue as if we're going to look outside. So now that I have all of this here, again, I can group all of my things together so that my house moves together. So instead of clicking each, each item, since if we're going to build things in PowerPoint, sometimes you might have objects on top of objects on top of objects. So what we can do is hold down our mouse and drag it across all of our shapes that we want included. Oops, we'll try again here. There we go. So now my rectangle, my triangle, excuse yeah, my rectangle, my triangle, and my square are all connected. I can click arrange and then group them together. And they're able to move all around, however I'd like them to move together. If I don't like it, I can click ungroup and off they go. Something else that we can create are borders within our, our PowerPoint. So to start a fun border, I'm going to first by start inserting a square or a rectangle, I should say, to the outside of my pages. So let's say I want to put a border around a worksheet or some type of activity that my students are doing. I'll fill my shape in and under the outline, I'm going to go to weight. I can decide how I want my line weight to be. Let's say I do a three point. Notice how it got thicker. And maybe I want my outside to be dashed. Okay. But what if I want to spruce it up a little and perhaps I want to have a thicker border? Well, what I could do then is add another shape inside. And maybe I want to have a solid. So I'm going to get really close here to this border and see if I can't do something fun. Now, I can't, I need to get a more detail here. So you can zoom in on your, on your page so that you have a little more control on how big or how small your rectangle gets or any object, if you will. Okay. 
I'm going to leave this one as a solid red, let's say. And a so my border I want to be a solid red too. Now I can go ahead and insert another shape. Let's say we do a rounded edge. Leave a little bit each way. I really don't like how I want it more square but rounded, so I'm going to just bring it in just, just a little bit. I'm going to make this shape fill in with no fill, but then notice by no filling, I now get that red. I don't want to see that, so maybe I'll change it to white. And now perhaps I will change um, this border to white as well, so it just kind of blends in. And I've now created a fun, unique border for my page if I were to print it in, in color. And I didn't have to pay anything for it. So really use your, use your items here to do that. So maybe instead, let's try something fun. On our shape format, let's change, let's change our shape fill back to, let's change it to a gradient instead, or a texture. Let's see what that might do. And then let's perhaps change, I don't really like this red anymore. Let's change that to a, a, a lighter color, a little more neutral, if you will. That looks a little better. And then we'll do the same with our border so that they match. I could also insert, let's say, a circle. If I really wanted to draw attention to something, I could insert something here. Let's say we make it exactly at four and a half by four and a half and center it in the middle at the top. Perhaps this one we fill in white because we might want to type something in it. So I'm going to have it be white as well so it's like a soft focus. I can insert a text box. Make it in the middle. Choose a fun font. And now what I've done is just created a, a binder sheet. So I could use this on, in the front of my binders. I could use this as a, a cover sheet of some sort. All kinds of ways that we could that we could create things. So I encourage you just to play around with the shapes. I encourage you to play around with not only shapes but creating your own borders in a variety of different ways, using a variety of different shapes, stacking shapes on top of each other, using the fill pieces, and just playing around with how you could work on the basics using PowerPoint. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Until next time.